Hey, this is Ryan. And this is Steve, and you're watching CC Cycle Hum. Uh, today we're talking about Gun Street Wiring Shop, specifically the Super Rich Steve. That's and a custom harness they put together for Steve's uh, Squire Telecaster here. This is your signature guitar, really. Yeah, this is the electric guitar I've had for a while. It's a, I guess we'll talk about it. It's a Squire Japanese uh, Telecaster neck on a random body. Seymour Duncan SSL1, which is the vintage Zaggard in the, in the neck. And a Seymour Duncan, I'm not really sure what, but I think it's a custom, uh, the custom model, which I is the SH5, I wanna say, in the bridge. Anyway, I love this combo. I got this wiring set up from Gun Street Wiring Shop. And uh, basically what they did is they put a push-pull pot on the tone knob that switches between the humbucker in phase and the humbucker out of phase with itself. It's just a humbucker. Each coil is fighting each other. Uh, you wanna show us the difference of the sounds? Yeah, so uh, so here's your single coil. Everyone knows what a single coil sounds like. Why are you showing us the single coil on the, on the I neck? I don't know. I mean, people wanna hear that out of, out of phase uh, bridge pickup. Here's that out of phase bridge pickup. Here's the in phase. That's in phase. Here's the out of, out of phase. Where did it go? So there's a significant volume drop. Play some like twingy little thing. You gotta kind of fight with it, but of course, if you know anything about pickup wiring and phasing, a pickup, a humbucker out of phase with itself is gonna kind of mostly cancel itself out if right. it's a balanced humbucker, which this is. Uh, one of the places where this sounds cool is in the middle position. Here's the normal middle position. And then with the humbucker out of phase. So it kind of gives you that middle position with uh, a little less of that humbucker beef, I guess. Yeah. Can, I, can I try it? Go for it. It's always a treat to get play one of Steve's guitars. Mm -hmm. So here is the bridge out of phase. Oh, big fancy pick, huh? I, I only play those gravity picks. And here's middle out of phase. And here's middle. I'm trying to hear the difference and just process that. And there's a little bit of like a, a more nasal thing going on in yeah. the middle position. Oh yeah, you can hear it on the leads for sure. I just wanted to check that out. Your so, pick back, sir. The one place where the out of phase really shines to me is um, when you apply like a high gain kind of sound to it. So when I first tested this out, of course I use a Black Star Fly 3 for all of my uh, in-house, in-house, in in-home. In-home. I live in a tiny little- In all your home. homemade jams. In all my little homemade testing, um, I use a Black Star Fly 3. And uh, so I had to turn it all the way up to get out of phase and it sounded really cool. So here's what, uh, we're using a Walrus Audio Contraband Fuzz here. Uh, so here. one knob fuzz and the, the knob only controls volume. Yeah, Just so, fuzz or no fuzz. So this is the, um, the humbucker in phase with the contraband. And then here it is, out of phase. Let me try a little bit. All right, so in phase. And then out of phase. Trying to find like the spot where it'll show off exactly what it's doing. This is out of phase. There's a big difference on the like the little yeah, you really, strings. Yeah, you really hear that like thin nasally tone with the out of phase on the humbucker only. And again, like I, th I think that's a really unique, cool sound 
that you really can only get from a humbucker out of phase with itself. Yeah, I mean, you definitely start to get that nasal quality with a lot of drive on it. And here's regular. It's on the regular setting, it's fuller and it's more of like a hot fuzz into a hot amp sort of thing where you throw on that phase and it's more of like a Brian May Queen sort exactly. of Exactly. The other thing I really noticed is that because the contraband is, is a bit of a gated fuzz, that with the full humbucker, it doesn't gate like as quickly. Yeah, but on yeah. the out of phase setting, even though because of the compression, the volumes seem really similar, the gating kicks in a lot faster when the pickup is out of phase. Yeah, you get that like quacky quality to it. Where in regular phase or not in phase. I don't know. I'm confused now. It You're just currently like, out of phase, but you just played in phase. <laughs> in phase, it just sounds like a big fat square wave, but then you pull the, the, the pot and put it into phase, if that's correct. You, of, you pull, pull the pot out and of, you're out of phase. You pull it out of phase. And you get that quacky uh, gate you were talking about. It's more high personality. Right. So it's almost counterintuitive where it's like, you'd think that more gain would give you a more interesting lead tone, but then pulling out some of the gain by putting it out of phase, uh, kind of, it's like, it's like starving the fuzz by rolling back your volume. Right. But you're also adding in this nasal quality. Yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of, it's really changing the EQ. Yeah. So uh, what we're gonna do now is along with this kit, I got the long live the cone from Gun Street Wiring Shop. So we're gonna drop this they in. They sent this guy two different wiring This is a, one guitar. a coil cut. So instead of taking the pickup out of phase, it's just going to cut one of the coils completely. And uh, we're gonna check that out. Like a coil split. Right. Yeah. So is the, the, the harness that you have in there now, do you feel like that's something that's useful to you? Something that, that you'll you'll use in a set or you'll use for home playing? Is it interesting to you or exciting to you? It's all? really interesting to me. I will say that for the kind of player that I am, I don't know that it's the most versatile hmm. thing, but I can definitely see how somebody who uses a lot of fuzz and will, actually I would feel like this set would be more useful to you than it is to me because you play with a lot more fuzz, yeah. even in your, in your live shows. I think you utilize fuzz a lot more than I do. Uh, I tend to utilize more clean sounds. Yeah. So to me, um, Honestly, the, the this middle um, out of phase sound, where'd that pick go? It's here in my hand. This middle sound. I think um, that middle sound is I like, really like it. That's I like a good it. Steve sound. I like it a lot more than this sound. The way... The I really like that no sound. Picnic. Uh, <laughs> But that, that sound, I, think, I think my bends are like half of a picnic. Half a picnic. We do sounds. know a guy whose bends are no picnic. I think his bends are a better picnic than your bends. Mm. <laughs> um, I, I really like the middle position out of phase on this, but I really want to try this coil cut sound and see what we get. Yeah, I think you'll um, like a coil, uh, like a coil split sound. But yeah, that middle position with the out of phase, it just pushes it a little bit more in the direction of pure Steve. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. Should we do it? Let's wire it. Let's do it. All right. We're back. Yeah, first things first. This is an Weller SP40L. Normally at home, I use a Hako FX888D, um, which is recommended recommended to me by several like professional level guitar and pedal builders. Um, but not only does Ryan only have this pencil uh, thing, which should be fine because it's a Weller product, um, but he also does not have a brass uh, a brass wire thing for tip cleaning or a sponge for tip cleaning or anything else. Also, this originally had a tip on it. I hope you can see it from that Steve camera. Steve broke my tip off. I broke Ryan's tip off. 
I said, Ryan, do you have a way to clean this? And he handed me a wire toothbrush. It's not a toothbrush. It's a wire brush. It's a steel wire brush that looks like a toothbrush. It took what, 25 minutes to do this basically? Yeah, you think, it you think it would've gone quicker with a better soldering iron? It would've gone at least five to 10 minutes faster with okay, mine. Okay, okay. Well, now that you broke my tip off, now I gotta buy a soldering iron or a tip. It gets hot enough to melt the solder. It does. It, it works. It's a forty watt. Um, it's a forty watt iron. It got the job done. It's not really the iron that bothered me as it's much as your lack of, of accessories. Yeah. When you I don't have it, the whole kit. When you handed it to me, I was like, "Why is this rusted?" It's not rusted. It's just crusty. But you don't because Ryan doesn't. Uh, I don't have the thing to clean it. Ryan doesn't tin his tip before he stores his soldering iron. I'm just a sloppy solder boy. Anyway, we're here for the uh, we're here for the Gun Street Wiring Shop kit. This is the pickup now. Uh, this is the kit. Uh, long live the cone. It is the it's the coil humbucker split. coil split. Yeah. So here's middle position. Both pickups, no split. Those bends are no picnic. That's a lot of noodles. That's some uh, sloppy and noodles. And here is the here's the split on that. Split and a little split. It's super chimey with the split. I think you're gonna love that split. Humbucker. This is what it sounds like when a bass player plays guitar. Humbucker, awful. I just keep playing the same thing over. Oh, I know. I know. Gotta get that John Mayer guitar face. All right, split that humbucker, Steve. This is why I don't do demos, this is like, guys. This is like the broken piano setting on the Omec. Pulled it out of tune. My hands are too let, strong. Let me see it. Let me see it. You definitely, it definitely buys you some serious clarity. Yeah. From the bridge position. I'm all tied up in a here. All right. Now I'm gonna take a stab at this. Right. Here it is with the regular humbucker. Here it is split. Clearer. I really like the way that sounds. Yeah, it it's almost, almost strat-like. Hate the regular humbucker now. <laughs> so for me as a player, I've always been um, drawn my my first, well not my first guitar, but the first guitar that I, like I really fell in love with uh, was a old well a '80s Japanese Fender Stratocaster. So I really love those single coil tones. Uh huh. Um, and really, I, I tend to use humbuckers out of necessity because I play in places with a lot of uh, interference from lighting. So I'm really hoping this single coil uh, holds up, uh, and I, I guess I'll find out Sunday, actually. There's a little bit of a buzz to it, but it's barely there. But not there. much, yeah. There's not much. Let's, let's throw on the fuzz and see what happens. Sure thing. Here's the humbucker. And here it is split. There's barely any noise there. Yeah. With the fuzz, it definitely doesn't make as much difference as that with the phase, with the phase setting did, or yeah. the phase harness did. Uh, but but cleaner. It buys you so much clarity. Yeah, there's a lot there's of real estate bunker. there. Um, but it's still a lot more, I think, usable in there. I think with this, so kind of my concern with the out of phase, because it's not something I was necessarily looking for, is basically the push-pull pot gives me five functional, five positions. Right. With the coil split, I feel like I have five functional positions. With Where the, the phase wasn't functional? With the position? phase, I think I had four functional positions, plus a position that was functional if I had a pedal that was dedicated to using with that. 
So like if I had a fuzz on there that I was gonna use out of phase and that would allow me to access that fifth position. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, but I don't think I could have used the out of phase sound by itself. Interesting. It just I, wasn't your style. I could have used it in like a recording setting, but I think I, I lost too much volume to use. Right. And you're not using on a regular basis. Heavy gain to do the Brian. Exactly. Thing. With a, yeah. with a with a high gain setting or with a cranked amp, I could have done it. But it, but to it's not something I could have switched to in in the middle of a song. Interesting. Whereas with this, I think this gives me the option of if I'm using like say humbucker on the verse, and I want something cleaner on the chorus, now I can either switch to the neck or I can just pull the tone pot to get two different variations of a single coil sound mm. out of the same guitar. <laughs> There's my sloppy noodle. I'm interested to hear back from you after you get some uh, playtime with this live yeah. to see how it does for you. Um, uh, how do we want to talk about uh, how long it took to install? Yeah, so this was basically a 20, 25 minute install, uh, start to finish. Um, well, it was a little longer because I screwed up. He wired the uh, output jack backwards. Yeah, but it would have been about, I think, 25 minutes. And that's with Ryan's crappy soldering iron. Um, that this, soldering iron has gotten me a lot of things done, so. Um, maybe you can take a picture of this. I don't know if you guys can see this. If you can't, Ryan will make a picture where you can. This is the diagram that came with the kit. Super easy to follow. They make a custom diagram for each wire. Yeah, so um, this was fantastic. Yeah. Really easy instructions. In this case, the series wire that I was connecting to was um, already labeled. So, um, it was perfect. And, you know, like I said, with these two kits, I didn't really know what I wanted. I contacted Gun Street and said, this is what I have. It's a little different take on a Telecaster. What do you think would be cool for me to try out? Um, the out of phase is cool. I think for my playing, the push pull pot for a coil split is cooler. It's definitely something I'm going to get a lot of play out of. Yeah, I think, I think you're going to you're going to really enjoy that. And uh, I'm definitely looking forward to trying this out soon. So. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think I have much else to say unless you got any questions for me. I don't. Let's uh, let's wrap up and go record a regular episode. Huh? Yep. Later, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, just like, leave me rude and nasty comments. Leave Steve rude and nasty comments. Yeah. I uh, I actually probably reply to as many comments as you do <laughs> on YouTube. People don't realize it. And my favorite thing uh, is when people ask you a question. Or people say like, oh, right, oh, th that guy's playing is out of tune. Or that guy's doing this thing wrong. And my comment will just be like, Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> well, you don't have a lot of room to talk after your sloppy noodles here today. <laughs> I'm a bass player. What do you expect? Bye, everybody. See ya.